Ni hao. Hello, I'm Bill Gaffey. I'm General Manager of Clean Water Services and Executive Director of the Clean Water Institute. Clean Water Services was born out of a desperate situation in our watershed. Since that time, through innovation and partnership, the water in the basin has been transformed into a cleaner resource than it has been in many, many decades. We host a huge Intel presence, Nike's world headquarters. The economy could not be more vibrant. Our philosophy for integrated planning is to maximize the natural system as much as we can because that provides a lot of benefit, not only on the environmental outcome, but on the social and economic outcome. And then we are uh, adding the reliability by using the great infrastructure as well. Our watersheds department really has developed the expertise around how to design and create these natural systems uh, so that they work. We have a, a group of very high quality professional personnel here who uh, enable us to really move forward on these innovative approaches with uh, a good scientific and ecological basis. We're looking not only at repairing corridors, but we're looking across the entire landscapes, the riparian, the uplands, the wetlands, the areas of up above the streams and the lakes of the watershed. And, and those are the areas that, when integrated together in a thoughtful restoration package, bring broad-scale watershed health and resiliency. We are water architects, but we work at the junction of architecture and environment. That's our role on the team is to think about the spatial opportunities that present themselves uh, to our clients. We, we look at where people are, what the pattern of the urban settlement is. We analyze the networks that are in place and the systems that could be enhanced so that the technological portion is working. And the city then can operate in relationship to its territory, to nature. Many of these green infrastructure approaches can save millions and millions of dollars. I think that the key, at least internally, is how do we coordinate these efforts to create the best catalytic effect that we can get across the entire watershed. And that means understanding how wastewater processes work, how you know uh, other clean water processes work for uh, storm and those types of activities. We discharge the treated wastewater from the plant. It goes over some rock beds uh, that were specially engineered. And in that process, uh, there's a biofilm growth of ammonia oxidizing organisms that grow on the rocks. And they remove the ammonia by oxidizing it to nitrate. This is the first application of this technology in the United States. You know, having a wetland component between the steel and concrete to buffer the chemicals and the, the processes that go on before you deliver it back to nature has been a tremendous benefit to water quality. We're just picking up on what Mother Nature has been doing for millions of years. Systems can be imposed from the top or they can grow from within. The Chinese idea of Wu Wei, not making but growing, is something we can learn from, something we study, something we, wherever we are, um, embrace. So we have the whole suite of smart systems and to help us making decisions and protect the environment and the community. The basic level is your physical infrastructure. So this could be a pipes or pump station or like a creek or river. So there where you want to control your system. The second level is really the sensors and control. So that will be your flow gauges and your water quality sensors and your continuous monitoring devices. The third level is about the communication because when you have a sensor, you have a data, how do you trans, uh, transmit it to your workstation so you can see that real time, so you can make real time decisions. So the first level is really having that visualization, the, the software that you are able to use. We also have just launched a watershed uh, wiki. It's an objective dashboard and people can really review and understand the performance of the watershed and your infrastructure. This is a real time control control stormwater system and it's important because it mitigates the adverse effects of land use changes 
We have a camera so I can actually see, see what's actually happening out here. Everything you see here is on a web dashboard through the Internet of Things. So anywhere I have Internet access, I can log into this system and see its performance trends. So all the information is there and it's real time. Um, so you can see instantaneously what's actually happening. You need to be able to measure things you set up. It's a process then of monitoring to understand the effects all the while feeding back, all the while into further research and smarter action. We do monitoring for all of our four wastewater treatment plants. We monitor stormwater and we monitor the Tualatin River watershed. And the better we can understand it, which is, comes from a lot, a lot of data, the better we can uh, develop those kind of natural systems and, and uh, make them work for us. So we're constantly sending data out to wherever it's needed. We now have uh, a total of four unmanned aircraft systems and uh, the watershed management department is using them to go out and monitor the growth of vegetation that they've planted along streams and riverbanks. With remote sensing and LIDAR, we're able to get more of a complete picture. We're able to see how tree canopy has changed um, on our projects based on the activities that we've performed out there. The technologies that we're using provide a near real-time feedback to the project managers. Having that data to tell that story is really crucial for all of our partners and to be able to continue to work with landowners on the scale that we need to. Clean Water Services have 40 years of operation maintenance experience. We are able to help you to guide your operation maintenance program as well. So we have nearly 800 public water quality facilities and, and, and the majority of those are vegetated. We came up with this idea to develop this training so to help the contractors and the property owners realize the purpose of these facilities, uh, how they're to be maintained, why it's important that they're maintained, and what they do. When we get rainfall, we immediately have an opportunity to do something good with that water or to go in the other direction and uh, pollute it or make it worse than it was. And so the point of the training is to make sure that the folks that are right there managing those facilities understand the importance of their role in the process and then can actually train their people to do the right thing so that the facility continues to work and continues to function the way it was intended. When we do planning, we really look at a lot of information in order to develop this plan just for, for the city we are working with. So what's the hydrology conditions? What's the water quality condition? What's the culture of this city? Each uh, project is art and science together. I think the biggest success is how quickly Mother Nature comes back. We see beaver ponds throughout the entire basin. We see the wildlife that comes with it throughout the basin. We see songbirds, we see waterfowl that hasn't been here in years coming back and, and thriving in these areas. I think they're probably the best indicators of large-scale success. We have learned a lot. We have accomplished a lot. We have a lot of experiences and knowledge we are looking forward to sharing with you. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me anytime.